Welcome to a new video in my home automation and Node-RED series and today I'm going to share another Node-RED content and again this is something that I've done previously in one of my Weidmuller videos but I actually quite like the concept so I thought it worth to mention it in a separate video as well and this was about how to store data locally uh, on, in CSV files. A couple of years ago I made a video how you can store time series data in SQL databases and that video was actually quite popular and I thought this is probably a good backup solution for any data storage because even if your main data storage is your database and either you are using SQLite or maybe you are using InfluxDB and you are using that database primary to do reporting Maybe you just want to have another option to back up your data in a file storage as well. And I think uh, this solution is, it, it makes it really, really simple. So the idea here is that uh, whatever data you have, it's going to be stored in a CSV file. And then uh, this, and this flow is going to make sure that a new CSV file is created regularly. Let's say I want to create these files daily. I want one file which stores the measurements for one day and on the next day it just, uh, uh, the code is just create, going to create a new file and um, well that's what we have here and this is what I call the autologger and actually it is really simple to achieve uh, in the beginning I thought it's going to be more complicated but actually it's not so what we start with is uh, we have to prepare the data so in the message.payload I'm in this particular case I'm setting the temperature and the humidity from an outside weather station and I'm also adding the timestamp. Of course we have to add some time so we know what time it is related to. So I'm just using the JavaScript timestamp. I'm using this because um, when I read this file it is really easy to read and, then, and use that date in a chart functionality. Again, if you have seen my file browser video, you probably remember that uh, I'm actually creating these files and I can use this just to visualize the data in, in a file. So uh, that timestamp, uh, you can just give it to the UI chart and that would interpret it as actual date time and you would be able to visualize that data from the CSV file quite easily. That I've covered in my file browser video. So going back, you have a message.payload. The first column is, or the first, well, not the first, but one of the attributes is a timestamp, and the other attribute is basically the rest of the data that you want to store. It goes into a file generator function node, and this would generate the file name. So what you can see here is I'm creating a date variable, which is going to store the current date and time. And I'm getting the various, uh, you know, the year, month and date and an hour and a minute. And I'm constructing a file name. So this is a Maplin old weather station. So it's going to be Maplin underscore year, month, day dot CSV. So basically the file name is going to contain the uh, the actual date as you can see here. Um, the reason I'm using this format because if I'm looking at the files and you know by default is uh, sorted on name then it uh, appears in the correct date order. But if you have other ideas how you want to do this, uh, for example if you want to create a file every month then you can just lose the date part here so your file name is only, only going to contain the year and the month or you can use weekdays or something like that as well. So once the file name is created, I'm also adding the path to that file name. I just created a new folder in my slash home slash pi data log. So I'm storing the CSV file separately. And um, yeah, I'm just setting the rest of the you know parameters. I'm storing it in a, uh, a variable. And I'm also setting a special payload because what I'm doing next, I'm passing this to the file lister node, which is, you can see it here, it's called node red contrib fs so you need to use this one and this file lister node is uh, configured so it looks in my slash home slash pi slash data log folder and actually uh, because i'm passing this uh, message object the pattern and the file name so that would override the file pattern here uh, and that actually is going to look for the file that this file name generator has generated. So basically it's going to check whether that file exists or not. That was the easiest way for me to basically do this functionality to check whether the file exists or not. And it is set to return a single message in the output which is going to contain the files in an array. And I can just easily tell that if the array is zero, that means that 
there are no file with that file name exists so it's a new file we need to create it and in any other case the file already exists so we can just append to that file so this is the path when the file exists this is the path when the file doesn't exist and actually it is really simple because i'm just getting the actual payload that we have set here back from this message.file content i just needed this to pass this information through the file listener and the switch node and i have the csv file so that converts my javascript object to csv i've specified the columns that i want to export here and and most importantly, I've specified here that it should also add the column headers to the file. So this is the new file we are creating and we want to add the column headers. And then of course it creates the file and the file name is being specified in the message.filename attribute. And if the file already exists, then pretty much we are doing the same, but the difference is that we are not sending the column headers. So that was the very simple way for me to make sure that the, uh, the CSV file that we create has a column headers in the first instance and then just the data in the rest. And of course it goes into the same file node which is set to append. And the append to file is, well, of course if the file exists, it's going to append to it. If the file doesn't exist, it's just going to create it. And I have the very similar logic implemented in another flow. And the only difference there is I'm using a different file name here. So this is why when you see my files, I have some mapping files and I also have some weather sensor files which is uh, going to have different structure and if I download any of these examples you can see that there are column headers in the first line and then the rest is just you know the raw data and I actually have quite a few because I think this logs every minute or something like that or every 10 seconds I guess so you can have multiple of these flow in your node red instance and it's just going to quietly keep logging the data into your hard drive or into your raspberry pi and of course we need to do something with this data so what i have done auto logger archive i've also created an archive flow because maybe on the pi i want to keep 10 days worth of data as you can see i only have 10 or 11 files here but this flow is actually running for more time than that so what i'm doing in this archiving flow so i'm uploading the older files to my nas storage and i'm just keeping the most recent one on the raspberry pi and if you forget how this autologger archiving works i left some instructions here in the comment notes so you can read stuff there but um, what it starts with it starts with an inject node which has a payload and it has an object which has a start and an end so that says that start archiving files that are 20 days up to 10 days in the past and the reason i've done such a wide range because if for any reason this uh, logic doesn't run for one day then at least i have 10 more days to pick up the slack and it is uh, i specified it to run every morning to 40 so basically it's just going to start archiving anything which is between you know 10 and 20 days old and here I'm using almost the same function that we have seen before, which generates the file name. I think I do have a small uh, change here. Well, obviously the change that it does everything in a loop from 20 to 10, but then it's basically going to generate the same file name. So if you have a different method of generating the file name, just make sure that in the archiving function node, you are putting the same logic in here as well. So as you can see, maplin and the year, month, day, and weather, weather station year month day so this node is going to generate a lot of messages which is going to be the mapping and the weather station file names from 10 to 20 days in the past and what i do next is i call a share script and this share script which you can see in the comment node is going to log into my ftp server you know pass the user id and a password switch to binary mode this is the uh, folder that I want to copy the files to in the NAS and this is the local folder where I copying the files from that's the you know home pi slash data log and it's just going to upload one single file so this share script gets executed for every single file and this is why I have this limiter 
because I wasn't sure if I can overload the NAS by, you know, trying to upload three, you know, 10 files or multiple files at the same time. So I added this limiter. So that limits the messages uh, for one every five seconds. And I think within five seconds, it would be able to log into the FTP, upload and then exit. And then if the FTP was successful, then I call another one. It's a sudo rm. So it's just going to delete the file from the local drive and and that's pretty much it and i have these you know diagnostic messages so if something goes wrong you can use the top output of this switch node and then do something about it i mean you can log an error or a message like that but of course remember that it's going to you know try to do this uh, every single day so obviously if it runs successfully the net for the next 10 days it will try to move the same files over and over again so these exec node will bound to have some errors because you know if you manage to move that file today it will try tomorrow and tomorrow and the day after as well and it will fail so i started logging these messages but i stopped after some time because i knew that the you know the flow is working fine so today is the 10th so you can see that i have from the first to the 10th here in this folder and as you can see, I have the rest of the messages already here. So this flow has been running from the 26th of August and I've, it's a, it has already backed up like, you know, six, what is it? Six, yeah, six files each from each stream into the NAS and only the most recent ones are still sold on the Raspberry Pi. So that's pretty much it. If you like this flow, I'm going to leave a link in the video description so you can download and import it into your Node-RED instance but um, thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.